The veil of uncertainty has been lifted, but watch now. Helping us to decipher the political and economical events affecting investors this week is Peter Kinsella. Peter, the US fiscal shutdown finally ended after 16 days. Despite the concern of potential for damage of the global economy, FX markets weren't wholly affected. Subsequently, stocks have been rallying on the return to work and EMs are set to benefit at least short term. Can you talk us through the journey investors have been on through this process? I guess really over the last two weeks, the FX market was very, very, I would say, blasé with respect to the U.S. debt ceiling negotiations. Basically, from day one, they priced in the fact that uh, some sort of compromise was going to be reached, which it was in the end, and therefore, sort of, it was really a case of sort of buying the rumor and selling the fact. So really what you saw is that in the run-up towards the, um, the announcement of the debt ceiling actually you know, being extended, etc., you saw that risky kind of currencies performed reasonably well, the likes of the Aussie CAD and a few others did pretty well. And then in the event afterwards, once the, the uh, once the deal was reached, you saw the dollar selling off quite aggressively. Now, this really shouldn't surprise anybody because if you look at U.S. data, it's been rather poor recently. So if you look at non-farm payrolls, they've been in sort of a downward trend for the last two or three months. So irrespective of what's happening with respect to the debt ceiling, if you look at the actual underlying uh, data picture, it, it's kind of difficult for the Fed to consider tapering at, at the December meeting. More to the point, if we're going to have another sort of uh, debt ceiling debacle in January, you know, again, I would seriously doubt that the Fed will even consider doing anything at that stage. So it basically means that the sort of a Goldilocks scenario that we have with respect to trading the dollar, you know, not great data, not bad data, and the dollar sort of selling off or being treated with benign neglect it will continue for some time. The 11th era deal is a temporary measure buying mere months before the government could be facing another default. The downgrade, the damage to the White House's credibility, the potential shaving off of GDP, and the fact that tapering has been put on the back burner sure sounds like a recipe for an economic recovery gone bad. Does it also take impetus away from the Fed, do you think? Where can they go from here? I mean, the Fed are doing more or less all that they can within the constraints that they have. Really what you've seen is uh, when people talk about sort of structural problems in the U.S. economy, the, the main structural problem that the U.S. faces is that they have a political system which is seemingly totally and utterly incapable of making decisions in an effective and timely manner. And really more than anything, that's putting a burden upon um, actual investment decisions. So um, if you look at sort of, you know, very simplistic political uncertainty indices, they're all kind of printing at rather heightened levels. So it indicates really that businesses have a lot of uncertainty with respect to First of all, their tax outlook. Secondly, with how Obamacare is actually going to affect their, their bottom line, etc. So it's really this sort of a political and fiscal sort of, um, let's say, uncertainty that is in large part preventing sort of investors from getting ahead and making uh, investment decisions. Where, so really from here, there's not an awful lot more the Fed can do. They've been as, as accommodating and as innovative as they can with their policy response. But really, if you look at the policy response, you know, it's kind of running into diminishing marginal returns. So at this stage, really, what is the effect, let's say, from further Fed easing at this point, you know? It's hard to say that it's really particularly good for yields, and it's hard to, hard to say that it's having any kind of real stimulatory um, impact from here. If we step back from the US, we had German ZEW readings which were stronger than expected, minutes from the RBA affecting the Aussie dollar, and UK data which analysts believe is paving the way for the Bank of England to pursue their policy. What else would you say has been moving and shaking markets? I guess that the real point is kind of what you're seeing, just not just looking at currencies but equities more broadly speaking, is that you are seeing sort of somewhat of a, a, a nascent pickup in developed markets economic growth. That's very, very clear. So the ZEW readings are showing that. If you look at export data, it's showing that, etc. So that's pretty clear. With respect to the BOE, fine, you've seen data improve a little bit, but a BOE are a very, very long way away from hiking interest rates. As I said, the stated policy is really that they want to get towards 7% unemployment before they consider doing um, another rate hike. And frankly speaking, I really doubt whether they're going to get there before t around 2016. So that being the case, those investors who are sort of getting, expecting big increases or in rates from the BOE, they're, they're going to be disappointed. Both Republicans and Democrats also agreed to talks over broad budget issues in an attempt to reach a longer-term deal by December 13. Still, the dollar weakened on the news amid concerns that the 16-day shutdown and accompanying default fears took their toll on an already fragile economic recovery. But what is your outlook for the dollar over these next few months. 
Well, it's kind of like I said uh, earlier on. I think that the data picture has been disimproving for sure. You've got a situation where the tapering most likely won't happen in, in December or even in early 2014. So there aren't really too many reasons for the dollar to rally significantly or strongly ahead of here. And that's kind of in, in contrast to, to expectations that you know many analysts, myself included, had earlier on in the year. Really from here, it's hard to see what's going to drive the dollar very strongly in, in the coming couple of months. Coming into the middle part of next year, probably there are some reasons to think that the dollar will trade more firmly, basically on, on expectations expectations of interest rate hikes two years further further out the curve. But from here, there's not really an awful lot um, moving in favour of the dollar, that's for sure. And looking ahead to next week, is there anything in particular our viewers should be keeping an eye out for as the dust begins to settle in Washington? Probably looking, we've kind of seen what's happening there. That's going to be pretty quiet for the, the medium term. From here, really, we're, then the next main point will obviously be looking at non-farms on, on Tuesday, non-farm perils, uh, to see what the employment outlook is looking like. But remember, this is going to be treated with a rather asymmetric, let's say, reaction function in, in the context that good data will be discarded, right, in the sense of because of the tapering, that, or, or sorry, because of the, um, you know, the shutdown we've seen in the last two months, bad data will merely reinforce sort of this negative perception with regard to, to non-tapering in, in December. That's the main thing to keep an eye on. Peter, it's been lovely to speak to you today. Thank you so much. Viewers, thank you for sticking with us and tune back in on Monday when we'll do it all again and find out what becomes of those all-important NFP figures on Tuesday. Have a lovely weekend.